Welcome back into the Dirthead Shed. It's time to get to work on Louis Vuitton. This truck is good, but the steering isn't. So we're gonna fix all that with all of this. New steering components, a full kit from PSC. PSC is a company that I've been working with for a long time on my off-road rigs, and they actually helped me out with this stuff before Ultimate Adventure happened, but I wasn't able to get the work done in time. So we're gonna do it now. Let's get busy. This might seem like just an expensive batch of parts that I'm like throwing at a truck for no reason. But basically on UA, it was like nearly undrivable because the steering was so bad. And I ran it into a bunch of rocks and stuff because of that, because I couldn't steer it fast enough. Um, and since then, it's just progressively gotten worse. Like for example, the other day when I was driving this thing, um, I drove it to work and base, I couldn't even steer the thing at all on flat ground with the tires aired up. Um, unless I revved the engine as I was turning, which is a little sketchy when you're pulling into a parking spot and you got to like blip the gas in order to get those big wheels to like steer. So we're going to go ahead and tear into this thing. I have had PSC steering on a bunch of rigs. Um, the best steering vehicle I've ever had is Mom's Spaghetti, and that's a Ford, which is unheard of because Fords typically have terrible steering like power steering pumps in the boxes typically aren't great, but uh, the PSC stuff on Mom's Spaghetti works amazing. It switches to a TC pump just like this one does, which is, I believe this is actually like a Chevy style pump and that's where, uh, that's where things start getting good. You get that, the Chevy style pump, you get a different pulley and then you get the box on it and it's all matched together. We're also gonna be adding in a steering ram hydraulic assist ram, which is gonna help tremendously. So uh, let's get this thing up in the air and stop talking and start working. The battery's disconnected and we're gonna pull the front wheels off, get these things out of the way, make a little bit of room to work. There's gonna be a bunch of, there's gonna be a bunch more to this job than just busting out a steering box and a pump. There's gonna be like steering ram on the axle and then tie rod and drag link as well. So it's gonna be kind of a big project. Hope you guys are down for all of it. This is the Pitman arm on the old steering box. Steering box has gotta come out, so I've gotta take the drag link and tie rod and all that stuff out. So I've got the nut loose, cotter pin out. I've got the nut still on here. This is my technique. I just hit the pitman arm. Should let go here in a second. There we go. Hitting it with the hammer just kind of shocks it loose from that tapered seat. So we get that out of the way. Then we're gonna knock the, do the same on the tie rod. This one shouldn't be quite as hard because I've had it off of here recently. That's loose. Let's get over here and Pop this guy off of here. This Ford setup is kind of weird how it has, and it goes through the, uh, oh, come on. Oh gosh, there we go. Drag link is off. Let's go get this tie rod right off. With how easy this stuff was to bend, it seems like it, would be lighter than it is. This tie rod and drag link 
can go over here and hang out in the scrap pile. Right here is a drop bracket for the track bar. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out of the way just because it's kind of in my way of working with the steering box. And I actually have another larger drop bracket for the uh, track bar, which might end up going in here depending on how all the geometry works out when we're done. Get my impact in here for all three of these. There we go. I'm getting hung up on the pitman arm a little bit. I don't have a proper pitman arm puller for this size steering box. So I've just got a couple of pry bar basically things crammed in here putting some pressure on it and now we're giving them a little bit of heat with the map gas. The heat from the torch basically expands the metal, hopefully loosening the pitman arm up off of the sector shaft. I don't know that this thing really puts out quite enough heat for what I'm trying to do here, but I didn't really feel like going straight to the, uh, the oxyacetylene torch. Where's my hammer? All right. That thing is pretty warm. Let's go ahead and tap these pry bars in there a little bit farther. Get a little more persuasion on it. There it goes. Ah, it worked. Pitman arm is loose. That worked pretty good. That's probably pretty hot. I'll grab some gloves and we'll pull that thing off of there. Next thing I wanted to do was get the belt off the pump, which I got off of there, and then start draining the system. I gotta run Hazel to the vet for a checkup and we'll let this thing drain as much fluid out as possible. No. One bolt, two bolt, and this should be the last one. I just gotta try not to drop it on the floor. All right, let's see if this thing will come out of here. Oh boy, that's heavy. There it is. Steering box, out. Dang it. I was letting parts drain last night into this pan. The cooler's out, the pump is out, the track bar bracket is out, the old box is out, and now I'm starting to line up all the new parts. Um, you'll notice like the old box here is a factory Ford unit. The new one here is a new casting, complete new unit from PSC steering. So this thing should be pretty good to go. It's going to be upgraded over the factory one and then it also has outputs for a hydraulic ram assist. So pretty stoked on that. The pump is going to be one that bolts in place of the factory one and it should have increased flow so that it does work with that hydraulic ram that I'm going to add on to it. So uh, let's go ahead and start getting some of these parts installed. We'll start with that and then the old pump there, the new pump there. I'm just gonna kind of prop this thing up in there and try and get one bolt started. There we go. If one is started, it can't really fall out. One there. One there. Pretty stoked. The steering was one of the big problems on this thing on Ultimate Adventure. So it will definitely be cool to see it come to life with some proper steering behind it. All right, let me go ahead and get the upper, the shaft hooked back up to the input on the steering box 
And then we'll go and grab the uh, power steering pump and get it thrown in. We ran into a little snag. If you look in there, my steering shaft is splined and this box has a smooth input. That's kind of a bummer, but that's how it goes. This thing is the first year of what should be a smooth input, but for some reason this had leftover 2007 parts on it. So the old joint was all set up for spline. So I'm going to end up getting another box, um, waiting on shipping and stuff on that. But in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and continue working on other parts of this project. The pump can go on. Uh, it shouldn't be a problem with the parts I have. And then I also have a bunch of like high steer components that we're gonna get into. So let me go ahead and get the pump installed and we will start moving forward on other parts on this project. Come on over here, guy. This is pretty standard for truck building. Things go sideways, that's all right. You just gotta keep moving forward. It's time to start figuring out tie rod and drag link on this thing. Let's go dig up some parts and I'll show you what I have to replace that old bent stuff that I put on here during Ultimate Adventure. We have that solution will be here in a few days. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and start working on this cool high steer setup from Barnes four wheel drive. Basically, this is a full custom steering setup that takes and gets rid of the ball joint that would have been, or tie rod in style, that would have been down here and moves everything up like a good five inches and switches it over to a heim joint style. So I'm just sort of mocking up these parts and figuring out what goes where. I think what we're gonna end up doing is, first step is gonna be drilling out this pitman arm so that I can get a bolt, 5 8 bolt to go on here and start mocking up the pitman arm and drag link. The cool thing about a three quarter inch bolt or a hole is that you can use a basic little unibit. This is like my go-to for drilling three quarter inch holes. Butter, like butter. That was awesome. All right, we're making moves now. Let's go see what else we can make work. All right, so that kind of gets us a pitman arm and a joint. By the time this is all said and done, I will build a lower bracket on here so that this is double sheared. Double shear means that you have a tab on both sides of this heim joint. Uh, or shock or whatever you're working with. Right now it's single shear because it's just supported from this one side. But right now this is a win. It's really important when you're starting to mock up this kind of stuff to go ahead and take the time, put it together multiple times, like to make sure you have the whole game plan figured out. We need to drill the knuckle out to one inch, which is what this guy is. We need to clean up some of the holes on the arm. Let's go ahead and just start cleaning up the knuckles and cleaning up these brackets so that the bolts like move freely through them. A cut brush on an angle grinder and just start getting some of the rust and paint off of the knuckle itself. These things are dirty. I don't like that bad until we started trying to clean them. As I'm cleaning this thing up, I'm thinking about like, how am I gonna heat this and weld the backside? This project just got bigger. I'm going to pull the brakes off, the, the brake caliper, the rotor. I gotta get the backing plate off of here. So it's time to start tearing this front axle down. Um, and while I have it apart, I think I'm gonna go ahead and change these U-joints out because I do have some heavier duty solid cross ones that I didn't get a chance to put in before Ultimate Adventure. So, like everything, this is snowballing. This is also kinda why it's important to work on stuff and learn what tools you need so that if you end up breaking on the trail, you kinda know that, oh dang it, I needed uh, 
a T25 Torx to get the hub apart. And I need some snap ring pliers to get that snap ring out of there. So it's always a good idea to work on your rig and make sure you know the ins and outs of it. Hook, where'd I put my hook? Here we go. This is a trick or a thing you need. Basically, it's just a piece of, like, this one is just a piece of quarter inch rod that I bent into an S. And that is just used as a caliper hook so that you can hang your brake calipers and not have them dangling from the uh, brake hose. Come on, there we go. Pop that seal and come on out of there. Axle shaft, boom. I'm not really sure where we left off the other day. I was working on this steering and then I stopped to do just a full blown welding video on this steering arm, which was cool. I think a bunch of people watched and liked it, which is awesome. Uh, now I've got to get back to actually doing the steering system on the truck. I need to do the other, the welding on this other arm, get it to the point where that one is at. Kind of lagging, moving slow, but I got this side drilled out finally. And I cleaned off a bunch of the junk on the knuckles so that it's kind of ready. Now we're going to go over here and we're going to bust out some welding. Uh, this is my MIG bottle. We're going to MIG weld these brackets to start with, and then we'll go and TIG weld them onto the actual knuckle. Let me throw the old readers on while we're here. Whew. It's like high definition. Everybody wants to see me push the weld and go uphill. Let's see if we can make that happen. out okay this uphill is junk that one worked out well though cool all in all i'd call that a win i'm gonna let this thing cool down a little bit and then i'll pull that heim joint out and we can just kind of go around and wrap those corners i'll clean up on it a little bit and then i've got to do a little bit of fitting because we've got to weld this sleeve in here and I got to get the height just right so that the bolt head doesn't crash. Bust out a little on the inside here. Feel pretty good about that. You want to weld the, or you want to preheat the cast so that it doesn't expand with the heat too quickly. If it expands and contracts too quickly, like it gets hot too quick or it gets cooled off too quick, then it's likely to crack the weld a little. So hopefully we can get some different shots than the other video had. All right, let's go ahead and try and get this. Whew. Let's go ahead and try and get this gap started. This section is 
the one that has the biggest gap and probably is also the most important. Kind of hard to get because I can't rest my hand on anything. There we go. This is kind of a cool angle. Welding backwards and then feeding from the opposite side with the filler rod. Nice. I feel like I got that better than I got the other side. This thing is like super hot right now. I should probably put a temp gun on it and see what it says. Where did that thing go? Is it in my pocket? Let's see how hot it got after welding. That's not too bad. 204, 320, 260. That's pretty good. So I tried to heat it up almost to 300. And after doing all this welding, it's right around 300. So I think that's probably good. Wrap this thing up in this fiberglass blanket and try and get it to where it cools as slow as possible. Check it out. Louis Vuitton is still on the lift. Ah, I'm in the shadows. I didn't uh, get it done in time to take this thing wheeling over the weekend, so I ended up taking mom's spaghetti yesterday, and it was pretty fun. So we're back out here messing with parts for Louis and the steering system that we're doing. Basically, I think we left off with uh, finished boxing these arms and adding some plates in. And I did a second video featuring my plasma cutter and basically making this steering arm. I went through and boxed it a little bit more, radiused things out so that they clear the heim joint at full steering and at full droop. And we'll kind of get more into that later. This thing's looking good. I got a bunch of primer and paint on it and I've been cranking some music and chilling out a little bit. I think now it's time to bust out the wire wheel on these knuckles and kind of clean this up and get these things painted too. It's Sunday afternoon. Everybody else is watching the football game. Super Bowl is on. I'm going to be out here making dust and painting, painting parts. All right. I'm gonna get busy. Well, sorta of busy. I'm gonna kinda of, sorta of get busy. I feel like that's pretty good. We'll do a little bit of, we'll put a little bit of heat on this primer with the heat gun and then I'll hit it up with some flat black. And gonna have to call good enough, good enough. It's Friday. It is beautiful out. It snowed yesterday like crazy. It is not beautiful in the shop though. Look at this mess that I've created. We have major issues in the steering department, major issues. I built this double shear pitman arm and then I went and bolted my track bar bracket in and it is gonna crash directly into it if I actually have to steer this thing. That track bar bracket's coming back out. It's kind of funny because like I've built a lot of trucks and it seems like I always build the same thing over and over again. And this is exactly why. I thought that I was going to be smarter than usual and be able to like not have to build this one so extreme. I thought I was going to be able to use some bolt-on parts and uh, and I just proved myself wrong. Basically what we're doing right now is Sorry. we're about to start building a track bar system that's almost identical to mom's spaghetti, which is fine. That truck works great and drives down the road well. I was just kind of hoping that I could get away with not having to do that much work. And I guess that was a little bit naive on my part because we're about to do that much work. After the whole steering arm debacle, it's time to do something a little more simple, like change U-joints. 
I've got the axle shafts out of this thing and I'm in the process of putting some Spicer Lifetime Series non-greasable solid cross U-joints in. These things are gonna be like a big upgrade. Mainly, I don't know if you know this, but when you have a greasable U-joint, there's like pathways inside of there that have, so you can have a Zerk fitting and the pathway gets grease out to each of these caps. Well, that pathway in there makes them kind of weak Heck yeah, we got one in the paint booth over there, and then I got one that's like ready to go. I just kind of clean in the little bit of grease off of it and clean it with some glass cleaner so that the paint sticks, a little bit of scotch bright. It's getting late. I'm gonna try and wrap it up for the night by getting this axle in place and hub and brake and all that stuff done. And then we'll come back in here tomorrow and we're gonna chop up this uh, track bar, do steering stuff. So let's get this thing put together, get some of these parts off the ground and back on the car. This thing runs Chromoly's 35 spline inner and outer. Pretty rad parts, like back in the day, these probably would have all been considered like competition grade, you know? And it's pretty rad that you can just get it nowadays, bolt it right on your Super Duty. This unit bearing is kind of hashed, but we're not changing it right now. Throw the unit bearing on so that the, the tone ring sensor or the ABS sensors at the top there we go. Everything kind of fine in its groove. I am looking forward to driving this thing again. It should be pretty cool. It's one of those rigs that's like, when I'm not driving it, I'm kind of like over it, you know? But when I drive it, I'm like, this thing's rad. It's like one of the coolest trucks on the street. Let's double check that hub. Yep, it works. Yep, all right, cool. Good day. Hi, Hazel. What you doing? You just hanging out? My buddies all went wheeling today, which is cool. I did not go, because I want to get work done on this thing and uh, it's been on the lift too long. So today we're gonna start right out of the gate by building the tie rod. I've been talking about building the tie rod forever and now I can actually do it. I got the hubs and hubs and brakes back on it last night so I can figure out my setting for tow and we can get this tie rod built. I went ahead and I bolted on some, I put some lug nuts on here and I used like an old shock spacer so that I wouldn't have to run the lug nuts all the way down. And I've got a piece of angle iron that's just sort of clamped onto the rotor. There we go. Basically just putting a straight edge on each rotor so that I can measure across and make sure that I build my tie rod the right width. If I, if I measure across here and I've got the same measurement front and back, then I know my toe is set at zero. And I know that my, uh, I know what length to build my tie rod. So let's go ahead and start pulling the tape measure on this and get some real numbers. Throwing my earplugs in because it's gonna get loud. I went and tracked down my heim joints with the weld bung and the jam nut on it and I've got it to where it's got about a quarter inch of thread showing. These are the left and right ends for this tie rod. So basically what I need to do is figure out my length, which is 57 and an eighth. I gotta figure out kind of how far it is from where the tube is gonna bottom out on that taper to the center of the hole. And it looks like I'm right at three inches on this. So if I figure the two heim joints is basically six inches off, and my number is 57 and an eighth. I need to cut my bar to 51 and an eighth. That's this guy here. So 
so this is it's pretty rad it's inch and a half 250 wall dom tubing super heavy duty stuff it's going to be not quite as large a diameter as the stock steering was but it's going to be like much better quality and a little bit harder to bend as well as being a whole lot higher up in the air awesome here's that fit up rosette weld in there and the v to weld here it's pretty giant pretty giant v to weld and i'm gonna try to stick to my guns of using my uh, tig welder on this project as much as possible i doubt that i'll use it when we get to like building brackets for the track bar but I want to try and TIG weld this and see if I can do it properly. All right, let's see what we can do here. I'm going to put the tacks on here so it doesn't move around. Do my little rosette weld first. I've never done this with a TIG welder. I've always used a MIG. That's not going to work very well at all. Let's just weld up the, the bung part first. Weld up that V. I feel like I'm putting a lot of heat into it, just partly because it's slower than welding with the MIG welder. I'm leaving the heim joint in there right now, mainly so that I don't jack the threads up when I rosette weld it. But I think I may pull that out because I'm getting a lot of heat in this weld bone. And I seize. Okay, we got this thing, this tie rod all welded up. I ended up doing three passes on it, and it seems pretty good. I ended up MIG welding those rosettes as well, because I could not figure out how to TIG weld that and not have it just blow the gas out. So let's go ahead and throw a bunch of anti-seize in there and thread those himes in and see if it's all going to work. I think I might actually throw a little primer on here first too so that I can put it together but not have to like take the ends out when I go to paint it for real. Just a little bit to help it when we go to paint the thing or drive it down the road. I don't want this thing to rust out on me. Lots of anti-seize. Anti-seize is your friend, especially on stuff like this these types of like tubes that are kind of closed off seem to always just trap moisture like crazy. How far did I get before it got weird? Right to the weld. Dang it. It's always something. All right. Let's see here if we can Ease this thing on in. It's not gonna play nice. Ah, so frustrating. The hardest part in dealing with this is that it's a weird size thread at seven eighths. So having a 7 8 tap is not super normal. And the other one is, the other side is left hand thread. So if we have a problem with it, then the tap gets real expensive. Here's my plan. 
I went over and I found an old Heim joint that is a 7 8 left. And I actually don't know that it's an old Heim joint. It may never have been used, but it was in my drawer over there with a bunch of other used stuff. So what we're going to do is cut a little slot in it and see if we can use it to chase the threads. Basically, I'm going to grind a little bit of a, a slot in this with the grinder and we'll run it in and hope that it chases the threads out for us. There we go, you can kind of see there. A couple of slots in there so that as we run this in, hopefully the edges on there kind of work like a tap would work and clean out, clean out the threads inside of this weld bung. Maybe it'll do a good enough job to get this thing together. If it was just a boogered up thread, it would be quite a bit of an easier process. But the fact that the whole thing is kind of shrunk down is the part that worries me. Ah. Should have just MIG welded this. Trying to get fancy. Look at me now. Trying to get fancy and it bit me in the butt. I'm joint out. Let's see. It definitely did some cleaning. Can't really see that, but there's a bunch of shavings on the uh, on the heim joint that I cut the slots into. So that's kind of cool. The homemade tap did something. Let's see if the the one we're actually going to use will get in there. All right, you can do it. Right here's where it's supposed to get, or it should get a little difficult. Will it go? We did it. We did it. It's not junk or it's less junk. Salvaged a, me a mess up right there. Probably still gonna run that time in there one more time without the jam nut, clean up the threads one more time. And then we're gonna go set it up to the car truck and see if it's even the right width or not. Bottom those out. And then we'll put it in the truck and we'll, t we'll tow it back out till it's where it needs to be. It's kind of a bummer that I like had to repair a problem that I created, but at least I was able to get it done without having to go and buy some expensive tap. So we can get this and we'll go start fitting it into the truck. Boom. Coming together. Yep. I think the toe is pretty dialed right there. Cool, let's do a quick check and make sure, see if the tie rod crashes into the diff cover or anything fun. Just barely clears it, that's awesome. And it appears that we're getting full steering lock. Perfect. Oh, this is cool. Yay, success. I think what I've really got to do though is pull the coilovers out so that I can cycle the suspension up and down all the way. 
and get a real reading on how this thing's gonna cycle. So I'm gonna take a few notes right now, like at full droop from bump stop pad to the bump stop is 10. I'll write that down. Uh, I know the shock is eight and a half, so that should put it at about one and a half inches uh, at full compression. So let me write those down and then we're gonna pull these coilovers out so that we can actually cycle this suspension properly. Come on out of there. Oh, that was nice. All right, set that to the side. All right, that was easy. Let's go get the other coil over out. There we go. We're kind of working through problems now. I've got this is my clearance between the tie rod and the pitman arm at full bump, which is pretty minimal, but it's acceptable. So I don't feel like the tie rod is a problem yet. I think the, the problem right now is that either the pitman is too low or the side where the tie rod goes to the steering knuckle is too low. So I gotta address this situation right here. Cause if you look from here over to the steering, it's not a straight shot. So the, the tube would end up crashing hard into this tube before we're able to get full compression. And the fact that it has to like go over to the other side is kind of a problem. One option is pitman arm could go up higher. One option is this could go up higher and get this above the plane. All right, we're working through this and coming up with solutions. This being the main one right here, I'm gonna end up with the um, drag link on top of the steering arm. So I will most likely end up having to build like a double shear for this up here. But that being up on top gets it to where it can cross over this without actually crashing into the tie rod. So that'll be good. We've got a good shot over to the pitman arm right now. And it seems like all things are gonna work out pretty well. So tomorrow morning we're gonna come in and I'm actually gonna build the track bar first. And once the track bar is in place, I can cycle the suspension and have it in the correct spot side to side. Then we'll build our drag link and we should be pretty good to go. It's Sunday and I'm drinking out of a regular mug, which means one thing, I gotta drink my coffee fast and get busy. Once this coffee gets cold, it's no good to me. Uh, I left off last night with the tie rod in and a plan on how to fix my drag link issue. And that plan is going on top of the uh, knuckle with the tie, with the drag link so that it can cross over and be okay. So we've got a plan. Today it's time, no joke, gotta get fabbing and busy and making track bar and drag link. This card only has like 40 minutes left on it, so I can't really like, oh, that looks good. Step one today, this morning, is gonna be getting this track bar out of the way and getting this big cast ear off of the axle that the track bar is mounted to. And I'm probably also gonna go through here and slice the front off of this cross member. I kind of need this space for the track bar so that I can tuck it back a little bit farther to the axle so that my steering arms don't crash into it. And then I also need some space back here for that steering ram to mount because we still have we still have a ram assist to mount and a couple other things. So let's get to cutting this thing off, make some space, and hopefully make some progress. Gotta be just about, there we go. All right, that's off of there. Getting that all cleaned up was nice and made a little bit more space. Now I've got a just a piece of tape from one heim joint to the other to try and get an idea of what the drag link looks like at ride height. 
And I'm just trying to go through this and figure out my spacing and what I can fit in here as far as a track bar goes. And I think I found the answer. I have leftover brackets from when I did the rear suspension on this. Um, so I have leftover track bar brackets and heim joints from rough stuff. So I believe I'm going to be able to make this work. Check this out. This is a universal track bar uh, axle side bracket. And if I take it and I put it like right here, it kind of gets right to where it needs to be. Um, it's the right height. It leans out just enough to clear the cross member up there. Kind of hard to see. And I can get a ton of weld surface along that old sway bar bracket, the axle housing, and along the, uh, the old track bar bracket. So I think by the time I go and build something and engineer and figure out, I'm not going to get much better than that. So let's try to use this bracket we got here. And then the other one should go on the frame. And I hopefully will just end up having to like either trim off bottom parts of the bottom of it or trim the cuts in here a little bit deeper. So we're moving along. The other thing I'm going to do, I've got these weld bungs and I'm going to end up using that heavy wall DOM that was made for the uh, drag link. I'm going to use it on the track bar because it needs to be super strong and the tie rod can go with a little smaller diameter and hopefully give us something that we can have a little less clearance issues with. All right, let's say you've got a bracket and the holes are the wrong size, right? But the bracket's already bent and you need to go from 9 16 to 5 8 like this case. Well, I went ahead and ran through here with a unibit, ran in and got my 5 8 But this is a quarter inch thick bracket and these unibits only go an eighth inch deep. So here's my trick. You take one of these extensions, put the extension in your drill, put the unibit in between the two, and then put the extension on. And boom. Drop that out. Now we go back at it from the other way. Piece of cake. I got the 5 8 hole going all the way through there now. We have the passenger side or the axle side track bar bracket tacked in place. Now it's time to figure out the frame side. I've got this universal mount that you saw over there on the bench. And it kind of gets... Hang on, I'm grabbing a tape measure. It gets close enough. Like right out of the gate. So Alright, yeah, that's like right at 40 and a half. So if we're within a half inch of the drag link with the track bar, we're going to be golden. I'm going to cut it and make this thing fit. So that needs to come up about a quarter. That'll get that flushed out. We're going to start cutting it like here and fit it one more time. And then that should get us pretty close. Let's get this thing tacked in place so we can build a bar and see how it works. I did a bunch of trimming on this so that it fits the frame right and then I lopped off the bottom portion so it only has two sets of holes now. Let's tack it in place and see if we're in the ballpark. I really think we are pretty close. Tacking it in spots that I can cut off if need be. That's looking pretty good. We'll get in here 
and build our track bar that makes its way over to that side. It's a pretty straight shot, which looks good. We just got to make sure we clear this and we clear that and the steering doesn't hit it. Sounds simple enough. I just cut track bar really quick and tacked the bungs in. I didn't do the rosette welds and all that yet because I want to make sure that this thing is the right length and I want to make sure it clears everything. So I'll go there. It's going to be, we're going to be all over this cross member. Let me grab some hardware and we'll keep figuring. I'm checking it out and track bar here seems good. Track bar clearance to the diff seems like it'll probably be acceptable. Definitely having clearance issues in this cross member area here and our height here should be good. I got like more than enough room for up travel there. We've got our temporary drag link in place now. I'm just going to do the same and tack. So let's go ahead and cycle stuff and see what problems we really have and what problems we think we have. All right, we need that bolt to drop down. Check it out, we've got our drag link crossing over to the inside point on the steering knuckle. We've got our tie rod on the outermost points and up like six inches higher than it was. And then now we have our track bar back here behind all of it. I know we are going to have major clearance issues here with this uh, cross member to the uh, track bar. But that is just, that's just steel. Like I can cut and move, I can cut that all off and then build a new little reinforcement plate behind it. I think we're pretty close. I want to, uh, I want to turn this wheel side to side and see where we're at. The steering column should be unlocked. So I should be able to turn this side to side and it'll tell me what's going on that clears and I got full lock that is awesome because that just barely clears right here that's the that's one of the clearance issues I was hoping that we could work out and that seems like it's good Let's go full lock the other way. It's going to puke a bunch of fluid on the ground because the box and the pump have a little bit of oil in them. Let me put a rag down. And we're at center. Now we're going all the way lock the other way. And boom, we have a tiny tiny little bit of clearance issue here right at full lock that's not bad this is the clearance that we have full lock driver side steer that part seems pretty good we have clearance on all of this and once I cut this whole cross member all up, then we'll have plenty of travel upward. I think we're good to go. Sweet, thanks for watching this dirt head shed. I'm gonna go ahead and keep working on this thing, get a bunch of stuff buttoned up. We'll finish this next episode, finish it all out and go test drive it, see how it is. Should be good, I hope it's good, better be good. If it's not, we'll bring it back in and we'll fix it until it is. Yeah.